Hi, this is your Sapil Bhartia, and today we have with us Daniel Goldschneider, founder of Open Wallet Foundation. Daniel, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you. Let's uh, talk about the Open Wallet Foundation, which, if I'm not wrong, was announced last year at the Open Source Summit in Europe, if, if, if that's correct. Uh, by then, we were like, we had a vague idea of what this foundation will be all about. Now, we are officially launching it in February. So if I ask you, what is Open Wallet Foundation? Let me start by saying what the Open Wallet Foundation is not. Uh, the Open Wallet Foundation is not a standard development organization. We are not trying to compete with uh, folks like the Open ID Foundation or the Decentralized Identity Foundation or the W3C. And the Open Wallet Foundation is also not in the business of publishing wallets. What we're trying to do is focus on what's between the standards and the wallets. So essentially, we have one goal and one goal only, and that is to create amazing open source software that allows anyone to publish a multi-purpose wallet. Wallet can mean different things for different people. Uh, there's a wallet on my iPhone. I have two kinds of wallet, one which actually holds my money and wallet which holds my identity. So when we look at open wallet or when you say wallet, what are we talking about? The Open Wallet Foundation will not be one monolithic project, but rather enable a lot of different projects in very different categories. And you're right, you know, wallets, uh, in our opinion, are incredibly critical pieces of infrastructure. Uh, they are important for identity use cases and payment use cases. They are important to grant access to cars or to you know, physical doors and probably to your, to your home in the future. Uh, they can be containers for credentials pertaining to your health um, or give you access to an airliner or hold NFTs or crypto tokens. We are hopeful that we can start to address more and more of those use cases by bringing developers to the table that are interested in those use cases and that start to develop components um, you know, that are enabling those, uh, those uh, use cases. And then if you're interested to publish a wallet, it's really your choice which components of open wallet code you are going to use for your wallet. So if you're interested in tokenized credit cards and debit cards, but not interested in car keys or FIDO pass keys, that's what you'll use. If you're interested in a wallet that can address as many use cases as possible, you will hopefully have that choice. First of all, Linux Foundation, you know, you folks do a lot of projects. You, you also bring a lot of communities together. On the other side, since you have a lot of communities already there, it also becomes very easy to spring new foundation because, you know, the stakeholders are already there uh, associated with the Linux Foundation in one capacity or the other. But if you look at Open Wallet Foundation, what was the real pain point that you, some of your you know, members or other players or the, the partners or even the large industries were facing where you felt like, you know what, we have to create this now. I think when you look at wallets from a holistic perspective, there are so many standards involved. Uh, my favorite example is uh, car keys and, and uh, you know, physical uh, doors that are not attached to cars. They use two different standards. And, you know, when you look at it um, from the perspective that you're interested in uh, providing access to physical doors, as well as uh, credit cards and debit cards, as well as, you know, things like, like pass keys, which hopefully are going to replace passwords, um, you're dealing with an immense number of different standards. So today you have to hire a lot of amazing engineers that know all of these standards in order to implement them. And the hope is basically that we can come together as a community and we can build the, the fundamental core software that is going to enable those use cases. Um, again, without competing with the SDOs, the standard development organizations, and without an intent to create a wallet ourselves. Of course, uh, you folks are officially announcing or launching the project this month. Talk a bit about uh, uh, the structure of because Linux Foundation uh, organizations, uh, they can choose you know their own governance model, their own style. So talk a bit about what does the structure look like? The Linux Foundation has been an amazing partner from the get-go. Um, I actually reached out to them without knowing anyone personally at the Linux Foundation. 
and uh, they responded immediately. They uh, took an interest in in uh, wallets and the Open Wallet Foundation. And uh, what you say is is exactly right. So we're part of the governance structure and the legal structure of the Linux Foundation, and more specifically, the relatively new Linux Foundation Europe. So the Open Wallet Foundation legally is going to be based in Brussels and not in San Francisco. Um, But we have our own uh, governance structure. We have our own budget. Uh, We will have our own board of directors. And we also have something which is relatively unusual, I think, for uh, LF projects, we'll have a GAC, uh, Governmental Advisory Council. So we're trying to bring together the private sector from you know, young startups to very established, very large companies, the nonprofit sector, as well as um, individuals from the public sector, because it is our conviction that success will depend on successful cooperation and fruitful cooperation of of all those groups. When you talk about engagement with the public sector, uh, government sector is also because if you look at the uh, Europe or European Euro- Union versus you know the US, you know uh, there are a lot of open source projects. The government, you know, they are doing a lot of work in those spaces as well. Is that one of the reasons uh, that you will also have one of those uh, you know units within the foundation, or you want to engage with them? So, what is the driver behind this uh, initiative? You know, governments are acting in a sovereign fashion, and that's the way it should be. A government really should be in a position to say, uh, if you want to uh, provide a wallet for driver's licenses or for identity cards or passports in the future, here are my rules. And whether it's the United States government, whether it's the European Commission and and, and member states in, in the European Union uh, or any other government around the world, that is really um, the function of a government to decide that. And we certainly don't want to compete with that. Now, some governments uh, or multinational um, institutions are also looking to provide reference implementations. And I believe that the Open Wallet Foundation can be useful in a couple of different ways. One way is that uh, we can provide software components in addition to Uh, that kernel, basically, that uh, governments are going to provide. And then eventually, there is also a question of what's the home for um, the reference implementations that governments themselves want to see. And I certainly hope that the Open Wallet Foundation uh, can be a good home for some of those uh, implementations as well. Can you talk about what are the things that are in your immediate pipeline? I will also talk about the long-term pipeline, but what are the things that you're like, hey, this is the this, these are the initiatives that we should start now? There are good examples, I think, in this space. So when you look at ISO MDL, for instance, which is uh, lingo for mobile driver's licenses and basically the standard that we're using today in order to put uh, driver's licenses on, on smartphones, Uh, There is code uh, on GitHub, in this case code that uh, Google uh, wrote and that uh, they made available on GitHub. Uh, But it's essentially one company. And I know of a lot of companies that are really grateful to Google for making that code available. So just in the case of ISO MDL, imagine uh, if it was not just one company, but if there were a lot of companies and nonprofits working together to maintain that code, to add new functions uh, to that code, it would basically uh, be useful, I think, for everyone in um, the ISO MDL space. And I believe that the way to differentiate your wallet, if you want to compete in a wallet uh, space, should not be the core components. You know, it should be the user interface. It should be questions of how uh, simple it is to use a wallet, um, but I strongly believe that the core components, the guts of your wallet, uh, will benefit if they are shared uh, by many different vendors. And we see a role model here in uh, the browser world. Um, you know, when you look at major web browsers, for instance, Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge and the Samsung Internet browser, they're all based on the same uh, browser engine or rendering engine, in this case, something called Blink. And when you look at the Safari browser uh, from Apple, it too is based on open source software, uh, in this case called WebKit. So what we're trying to do is essentially to mimic what has happened 
in the browser space and to say that uh, on top of the open standards that you're using, it is quite useful to have shared open source software uh, that you know competitors uh, can agree to use and they can differentiate their, their products, but still use the same fundamental software. Now, let's just go back to the point of what this foundation will be producing. As you said, you will be creating open source software. So do you have any kind of, not necessarily a roadmap, but things on the pipeline that what that software will be called, when we can expect the first release? This is going to be very much a bottom-up uh, approach. It's not going to be the board of the Open Wallet Foundation to say, you know, those are the things we're going to do first, but uh, really the other way around. Uh, the idea is that members, as well as nonprofits or companies that are not members of the Open Wallet Foundation, will come together and say, we are interested in car keys or FIDO pass keys or tokenizing uh, credit cards or debit cards. And that's essentially how these projects are going to start. And then, of course, you know, we'll need folks to contribute code. We need folks to be interested to join those projects as developers. And this is also going to ensure that it's not just a few people at uh, the Open Wallet Foundation deciding which protocols or which credential formats are going to prevail. It is very much a meritocracy or what my friend Brian Billendorf calls a duocracy. It is something where essentially projects that produce amazing code that is uh, fitting a need in the market is going to prevail rather than a top-down approach where we're trying to come up with you know, one uh, a perfect format for credentials or, or, or maybe a protocol. Um, everything that can be done bottom-up, I think, should be done bottom up. You mentioned uh, Brian Bellendorf and I'm a huge fan of uh, Brian, uh, which also uh, brings me to the point of that, uh, what are the other open source or Linux Foundation projects that uh, you folks are looking at? Of course, blockchain is there, Hyperledger is there, but is it, is it too early to talk about it? Uh, as you said earlier, that the, the desire for the software will come from the members and then we will see which software is needed. Yeah, that's exactly the approach. And you know, whether that's a standard where that is part of the Linux Foundation, uh, like, like Hyperledger, or whether it has something to do with EMVCO, for instance, in the payment space, which, as far as I know, has no ties to the Linux Foundation, um, uh, you know, doesn't really matter. We are trying to look at wallets truly holistically, and uh, the Open Wallet Foundation is not going to decide top down on on uh, you know protocols or standards or format um, it really should be driven by the community so if you are working on something and you think that um, it would be interesting for you to partner with other companies or nonprofits to create um, open source software for that particular project we hope that you know you will consider the open wallet foundation uh, whether or not that is based on on a standard or a project that is uh, part of DLF today. Daniel, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the foundation. And as usual, I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure.